Hey lovelies! Now when it comes to feeding a hungry family, few things are more affordable and convenient than whole roasted chicken. Whole roasted chickens are amazing because obviously they're really inexpensive compared to say chicken breast at the supermarket. Today I'm going to show you three delicious ways to doll up a whole roasted chicken and make it something really, really special for your family. All three of these tasty recipes are being featured on HealthyMealPlans.com. It's our amazing meal planning site that we built and it is so super convenient. It allows you to plan out your meals for the week, create a shopping list and take it straight to the grocery store. So there's a lot to love. If you haven't checked it out already, I really hope you will. It is guaranteed to make your life in the kitchen easier, which of course is what we're all about here. And without further ado, let's get to roasting some chickens. I'm starting with my go-to roast chicken recipe. And what we're going to do at the end is use all of the amazing drippings to create a gravy, which of course makes everything better. I think everything should come with a gravy. But first, we are going to pile in some flavor and we're gonna let our chicken cook on top of it. So I've got an onion I've just roughly chopped here. To that, I'm also going to add one carrot that we've chopped up and some celery. So this is going to be the bed that our chicken roasts on. These not only work as a roasting rack for this recipe, but they are also going to flavor the gravy that we're going to be making after with these chicken drippings. Next, I'm going to arrange my chicken on top of this and I'm gonna season it up really simply with a little bit of oil. This is gonna help the skin crisp up a little bit. And then I am going to hit it with some garlic powder, some dry thyme, some salt, and some pepper. It's really as simple as that. Now, don't hesitate, we're just gonna get in here with our hands and rub this around until everything is evenly coated. Once our chicken is nice and seasoned, our final step is actually going to be adding some wine to the bottom of our roasting pan. The reason I do this is because that white wine is going to combine with those chicken drippings, and then we are going to add that mixture to our gravy to get a really wonderful flavor. If you're not into cooking with wine, that's totally fine. You could swap in some chicken broth here instead. The other bonus of this is it adds a lot of moisture to your chicken. So there's a lot to love. Gonna give a quick hand wash and then get this into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you'll cook it for between an hour and 15 minutes and an hour and a half, or until a meat thermometer registers 165 degrees Fahrenheit in the breast part of the chicken. Once your chicken has come out of the oven, you can transfer it to a plate so it has a chance to rest for at least 10 minutes before you carve it, and that will give you just enough time to make your gravy. For my gravy, I'm starting by melting some butter in a soft pan on the stove. To that, I'm going to add some flour, and I'm just gonna whisk the flour and butter together until it's nice and smooth and starts to get a little bit golden. And you'll know it's ready when it gets a bit of a nutty aroma. That means you have reached a perfect roux. That's what this is called. To that, I'm going to add some good quality chicken broth and also the most important part, the drippings from my roasting pan. That is going to be where a ton of the flavor comes from. I'm also going to add a sprig of thyme to this for even more great flavor and a little bit of salt and pepper for some seasoning. And then it's just a matter of letting this simmer away, whisking it often for about five minutes or so. Basically, as this mixture heats up, it's going to get nice and thick and rich, and then it is perfect to be poured all over that amazing oven roasted chicken. Then you have a dinner that everyone will feel good about. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Next, guys, we are doing a take on a traditional rotisserie chicken. I'm also going to be roasting up some potatoes and carrots with this recipe, so it really eats like a meal. Now to get started, we are going to prepare our potatoes and our carrots by tossing them in a little bit of oil with some salt and pepper. You don't need a whole lot of seasoning on our potatoes and carrots because our chicken is going to be so well seasoned and they'll cook together, that will do the work for us. Once our veggies are prepared, we can set them aside and get to work on a really amazing spice rub for our chicken. So it all starts with some paprika. I've got about two tablespoons here, so quite a bit. To that, I'm going to add some garlic powder, some onion powder, and some celery salt. Now you can use traditional salt here, but if you have celery salt, there is just such a great flavor in it that I absolutely love and is so perfect in this combination. Finally, I'm going to add some black pepper to this, and then we will just give this a good mix. Once that's all mixed up, it's time to bring everything together. Now, the secret to getting this perfect crispy skin all the way around 
is actually going to be in a bundt pan. If you're not familiar, this is a bundt pan. It's used usually for bundt cakes, which have a hole in the center, but we're going to use it to prop up our chicken so that all of its sides are exposed. A pan like this can be found at pretty much any kitchen store out there. My first step when I'm prepping my bundt pan is to cover the hole in the center because our chicken is going to be sitting on top of it. So we want to make sure that none of the juices are seeping through. I'm going to do that by just putting a couple layers of aluminum foil over the hole. And then I am going to pile my potatoes and my carrots in and around my bundt pan like so. Next, it's time to arrange our chicken on top of the bundt pan. Now, as you can see, the idea here is that our chicken's going to sit upright, which is going to allow the air to circulate all the way around it, creating a nice crispy skin and giving us nice even cooking. Once your chicken is in place, you can go ahead and get your seasoning on. I am not being shy with my seasoning here. As you can see, I've left no skin unseasoned. The best part is some of that seasoning has fallen all over my potatoes and carrots. Things are gonna be delicious. Hand washing. My oven is preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and I've got the rack on the lower third of my oven. That's really important because obviously this is now quite tall. We're gonna slide it into the oven and let it cook away again for about an hour and a half or until the breast reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Not only does this chicken dinner taste delicious, but it all comes together, which is a single pan, so there's only one thing to wash at the end of it. Is this the most delicious dinner you could make your family on a Sunday? I say roast definitely. Finally guys, we are preparing a lemon garlic chicken that I have to be honest is absolutely to die for. This recipe is inspired by a blogger called No Crumbs Left. Her heroin chicken is considered one of the best chicken recipes on the internet and this is a take on that. So if you wanna see the original recipe, I will link that in the description box below as well. Now it all starts with a technique called spatchcocking or butterflying the chicken. Now the idea here is we're basically going to remove the backbone of the chicken, which is going to allow it to lie completely flat in our roasting pan. This is also a great technique if you wanna be grilling your chicken on the barbecue because it cooks a lot more evenly this way. Word to the wise, it's really important to have a pair of kitchen scissors dedicated to just using with food. Not a good idea to use the same scissors that you use for other household jobs on your chicken. You know what I'm saying? Once the backbone is removed, we wanna make one additional cut about an inch down the breastbone. This is gonna help us lay our chicken completely flat and make it much easier to cook. Once our chicken is butterflied, we can go ahead and get our marinade happening. Now the marinade for this chicken is the secret to its awesomeness. It's a combination of simple flavors, but over the 24 hours of marinating time, it makes something really, really special. So I've got some olive oil in my bowl. To that, I've got the juice of one lemon headed in here. So we've got some nice tartness and that great lemon flavor. I'm also adding fresh parsley, a whole heaping helping of garlic, and some salt and pepper. We're gonna whisk this together and then we'll pour it over our chicken. I'm gonna pour half on the back of my chicken, spread it out, and then flip my chicken over and pour the other half of the marinade on. You wanna make sure it's really evenly coated and all that deliciousness. Now it's just a matter of covering this up and transferring it to the fridge to let all the marinating magic happen between 24 and 48 hours. The longer, the better. It may seem like a long time, but trust me, you will not regret it. When it comes time to roast our chicken, we're going to remove a little bit of the marinade just by shaking it off. The reason we do this is because that parsley and that garlic can tend to burn in the oven, so we don't want a whole lot of excess marinade on our chicken when it starts roasting. I'm going to also arrange just a couple lemon slices on either side of my baking dish. They are the perfect accompaniment for this bird. Into the oven it goes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit until the breast reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important to note that a chicken that's butterflied like this will cook a little bit faster than a traditional whole chicken, so you'll wanna keep a good eye on it. Guys, I am super excited because not only are these three recipes incredibly delicious, but I now have three full roasted chickens to enjoy this week. So, there's a lot to love. I hope you'll give all three recipes a try, and if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Facebook me a photo, because of course I love seeing your kitchen creations. Remember, all three of these delicious recipes are available on healthymealplans.com, our awesome meal planning site, so be sure to check them out there. They're also linked in the description box below. 
If you didn't already know, my brand new cookbook is finally going to be available April 23rd, but it is ready for pre-order now. So to make sure that you get a copy, definitely go ahead and pre-order a copy. Of course, there's all sorts of deliciousness in the book that I'm really thrilled to share with you guys. All the links are in the description box below. And finally, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness where this came from.